done for a long time, and I coached other schools too, wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna get it done. We, we were gonna be lucky if we got a first down. And people, if you talk to people that have played us, if you talk to people that are in our league, they'll talk about how fast we are, and I'm telling you right now, it's an illusion. We're not as fast as we look like we are. And that's, that's to our benefit because we, we do things fast and we wear people down and that, that helps us. And just to put an example too, just for the size that we are, uh, this year we had two players on our team that were over, that were over six foot tall. One was my son who was six seven and uh, was a really good golfer. And then uh, we also had a, a, a linebacker that was six one. We had another kid on the roster, but he, he quit the second week. We was never off the roster, but that was as well. Our starting fullback in the last two years was listed at five six, and he's not five three. He was about 125 pounds. And that's just what we were doing to get it done. But since we made the shade, we've been 53 and seven. Uh, of those seven losses, six of those teams, I should say all, all seven losses were to teams that lost at level four, state or one state. So they're all quality competition. And we were just thankful to be, be in those games. Uh, I am a big culture guy. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna skip through this real quickly, but I really believe in the culture. It's, the, it's everything we do, it's not one thing we do that has led to our success. And part of that's because we have great assistant coaches. I have, I have a total of nine coaches on our varsity staff here, and we're a school of 290 kids. So you're thinking, holy cow, how do you have nine coaches? Counting myself in four <coughs> positions. The rest are volunteers, and they, they are true volunteers. They don't, I don't pay them anything. I, I buy them clothes, and I'll make sure that they're taken care of at any clinic they want to go to to further their knowledge. But we, we, uh, they, they do it truly for free. And a lot of that, they tell me, is because of the other stuff we do. We don't produce a lot of Division uh, Division three college football players, let alone any bigger than that. We, we have most guys stay in the community or go to the tech school or something like that. And so we're really focused on making sure that we're we're having good people come through our program. And that's relevant because we spend practice time talking about this stuff. How many years ago it was, WI said, hey, we're gonna restrict how much practice time you can have. We do all of our character stuff in that restricted time. So it's not, it's, it's not like something we do in addition to that time. But that's some of the resources we use. Uh, we really talk with our program a lot about love. We talk about loving each other. We talk about loving their family. We talk about uh, the love as coaches we have for the players, and it, it really, it really, we found, makes a toughness in our football team that really can't compete with anything else because they just love each other and they want to do everything they can for each other. And they, they will still try and tackle you or make a block if they have an arm broken or something else because they, they just love each other so much. And we also have a push up or shut up mentality, which basically means you don't criticize anyone. And that, and that might sound like it's tough. It was at first for my coaches, but we only say positive things. Now we might say, hey, you got to need better effort on that, but we don't ever uh, be sarcastic, try and rip people down. It's, it's all about how we can get better, what they can do next time, and, and learn from that. And that also is a big thing. And I'll tell you, it's not always easy. We've got, we've got kids that come through, we've got classes that come through that fight us at times on this kind of stuff. But, you know, we control the time when they're at practice, and we control what we spend our time on. If they want to spend all practice fighting with us on this and doing punishment type things because they don't agree with us, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll spend practice time doing that. All right, so over the last five years, we've gone to a fast pace, no huddle. We want to go as fast as we, as we can, the officials will let us. We're a multiple offense. We, we, always trade back and forth whenever we change formations or change up things it slows us down so we really have about three formations we do most of our stuff out of we probably spend about eight of our time in one formation and that's simply because we don't want to take time moving around the field uh, our team is very much built on defense we've always believed in all my 13 years there that if they don't score they can't win and uh, five years ago i mentioned that now we over these five years we, this isn't the, these are actually our numbers from this past season. Uh, how many yards per game, how many points per game. Uh, we, we actually have been consistently between 320 and 361 yards per game over the last five years and between 34 and 
points per meal. And I, I say this with the understanding that those numbers are kind of skewed because I have really good assistant coaches and our special teams are good. Our kick return is very good. We, we, we get the ball on the 10-yard line at times. Our punt return is very good. We, get, we move field position with our special teams. So we play on short fields in a lot of games. So understand that those, those numbers are, are with that in mind as well. Uh, the time possession really, truly means nothing to us. We had uh, this year, I don't have the exact numbers, but this year if you looked at our playoff, our, our level one, two, three, and four playoff games, um, I think in our one, two, and three level games, we had about maybe six minutes of offense. We, we, we played a lot of defense, but hey, that's what we have our faith in. It's what we believe in. And we're not afraid to have them on the field. And our guys are in shape. And it's not because we do a lot of conditioning, it's because of how we practice that our guys are in shape. And they, they like the challenge. They really, really like it. And the best part about this is the mentality our kids have, the minds that they have, that they never feel they're in a situation they can't overcome. They know they can score quickly, they can score a lot, and things, things happen in a hurry. Now, this uh, presentation is on, is on insulation and, and uh, practice planning. And I want to make sure you understand, when we made the change, I, I always loved the offense that I used to have, and we still have it in our, in, our, in our plays, we do some of that stuff, but everything was really, really wordy, and it explained everything our kids needed to know. Everything you needed to know about your responsibility was in that play call. And for example, if it was 24 blast, you know, blast that our fullback was going to lead on the linebacker. It meant that we were going to have our two back go, or I mean, sorry, our four back go through the two hole. And it was all, it was all simple, right? Everybody, it's easy stuff. The problem was we as coaches realized that it was easy to us, but our kids didn't, didn't get that. For example, uh, 24 back blast or 23 blast were the exact same play, just mirrored of each other. But we realized to our kids they were a completely different football play. They, there was no, there was no connection. And that was really from having conversations with our players and kind of some things we realized. So we, we got rid of all those rules. And I was someone that I always told our assistant coaches, we wouldn't put it in the playbook if we couldn't have it true to our rules, so I knew how to call it. And we threw that all out because it, it does, that's not how today's kids learn. You know, they all play Madden and they play uh, NCAA and they, they have read option week, they have wide receiver screen, they have Z spot. Those are the plays they don't space in. They're all separate, compartmentalized plays, and that's how they learn stuff now. So we decided to stop fighting them with that and to make that change. So for example, this is, an, this is a, a real thing. We used to have part of our quick passing game was one, two, two, one, quick, and it told us everything you need to know, from the quarterback to the lineman, everything you need to know on that. And we realized that we're just gonna call it blackjack. And we're calling it blackjack because it's 21. And our kids, when we said that, they're like, oh yeah, good, black jack, cool, that's where it is. And they go with that. And it doesn't matter what the formation is because uh, like some of the, the previous guys talked about, how almost, almost our entire passing game is concept based. So the formation doesn't have it. We have rules, they learn it as blackjack. We're constantly changing the formation so, they, so that we get away from the, if I'm, if I'm here, I have this route. No, it's what, where are you? Uh, you know, everyone, we have three on this side, four on this side, two on this side, one on this side, this is how it works. And they, they've, well, they've done a lot better. And the thing is, our kids told us that they like it and actually understand it now. And that was the big, that was the big thing. So that, you know, if our players understand what we're doing, and I, I'll tell you, it was a tough pill for me to swallow because our offense was easy to understand. It made total sense. And it just did to the kids. Uh, okay, so we change it, the advantage of that, the team learns faster because they're having fun, they're not having all these foreign concepts, and also we can play calls a lot faster, we can play things a lot faster for the single word or concept. For example, you know, if I just say blackjack, that's it. Now, because we have really, really good teams we play against, we can't stand there and call, call something blackjack. But what we do is we have, we have kind of a menu of stuff that that guys will say, for example, we have, a, we have another concept that uh, the guys call sevens. Now, there is no reason in the world 
why that should be called sevens on anything I've historically done, except one day the kids said, hey coach, can we call that sevens? And I go, I, whatever, we'll go with it. And then I just had to learn that. But what we really call that bigger is it's our casino concept. So our kids, we will we'll come up and our kids will tell the defense what they're going to run. Every play, they'll tell the defense what they're going to run. Because I don't want the QB just learning the offense, I want everybody learning the offense. But they'll say it. They'll say the cadence, they'll say the formation, they'll say the play, they'll say if there's motion. And they do it before every snap. And it's kind of ridiculous to think that we do that, but they do it really, really fast, and it takes a lot of mental stress on the kids they're playing against to recognize those kinds of, those kind of things. Uh, but anyway, they'll do that. And like I said, at sevens, it's our casino concept. So our, our kids, as the season goes on, they're not going to come out and say seven. They're going to come out and they might say, they might say slots, slots. They might say roulette, roulette. They might say um, some, other, some other casino game. And then they think they're being really cool and clever, so they have fun and it, and it, and it makes them more of it. And I, I do have to remind them that they have to change it because they are creatures of habit and they do want to say the same thing every single time. But it, it's, it's worked well. We use wristbands, we also signal, and we tried the picture play calling and I didn't like it. And uh, we've done a lot and we really use wristbands or signals the most. And at the end of this, I'll, I'll show you what our wristband looks like. And it's, it's really important as to how we teach it and how we, we progress through our, our whole, whole teaching of our offense. But we want to wean them off of that and signal as quickly as we can. Because here's the thing. It's really cool to go up tempo and a lot of people say, hey, can you send me a copy of your wristband? I'm going to say, no, I'm not. And it's not because it's some top secret thing I don't want to share. It's because you'll get frustrated as heck with it because it doesn't matter how you call it. What really matters if you're trying to go fast is how you can get the information from here to the 11 guys in the field. And it has to work for you, number one. Your play caller has to be able to convey that. The wristband works for us, the signals work, work for us. And really, like I said before, it's how our athletes learn now, and it's just a, a good thing. We do some different speeds. And again, I apologize for going fast, but so I get, we have red where we actually will huddle. Uh, this last season, we huddled very, very little. Uh, we're not nearly as good of a football team when we huddle. In fact, our, our kids have, have the slogan, they always say, life's too short to huddle. And, and that's kind of thing we say, hey guys, we got to get moving, life's too short for this. Uh, yellow is our normal pace where we're going no huddle and we're just not rushing it. There's not a panic or a sense of urgency, but we're going no huddle. Uh, green, we're going as fast as we can. And you can see yellow, we try to have the play clock at about 12 to 15 seconds. Green, three to eight seconds. Uh, we will still motion and shift in green. However, when we're really trying to go fast green, we will, we'll just line up and snap the ball, line up and snap the ball, and we'll go from that. And then finally, Jimmy John's is something we do every year, and the kids really, really like it. It is a set four plays. The kids pick them. I have veto authority when they're making the plays up. But they pick four plays that when we call Jimmy John's, regardless of the situation of the game, that game, those four plays are coming. And they're coming boom, boom, boom. There's, there's no, there, now, if I want to change them, you'll see me jumping up down the sideline because all of a sudden we're in a situation where it's bad. Um, that, that happens. But Jimmy John's has been, it's been outstanding at the end of a half. Um, really just to change up when teams think, oh my gosh, they're going fast. It's an extra gear and it just, it just helps us out. And really, the big thing as, as a coach, since we started doing this, is I, I spend so much time yelling at officials to go faster that um, I, I don't have time to yell at my players anymore because I'm always telling the officials to go faster. But uh, that's, uh, that's just one of those things. We're constantly trying to go faster because, like I said, we're, we're better when we go faster. And our kids like the, the swagger they get to have when they get to go fast. They see the other team really. Um, before I get to this last thing, one more thing about the tempo that's really important to know is, like I said earlier, we've got a lot of really, really good coaches in our conference. I've faced some really great coaches in the playoffs. And the thing is, I figured out when we made this switch, I had to stop trying to beat the smart men across the field, and I had to focus on beating the 16 to 18 year olds on the field. And what we're trying to do by our tempo is we are trying to create as much anxiety they can have on that field. We want them to be stressed beyond belief, both physically and mentally. 
And that's, that's why we do it. And that's also why we're not as good when we slow it down. Because suddenly, now the coach gets to actually get in the defense he wants to be in, make the adjustments he wants to be in. And that's, we, we want to create that stress because we won't operate well in that stress. But uh, it's, um, it's worked really well for us. So not only being up-tempo, but we still try to do a lot of things. And here's, here's something else. Um, if, if you don't know Jeff Rosemeyer, Jeff Rosemeyer is the head coach at Kobe High School. He was there for a lot of years. He's actually being inducted in the WFC Hall of Fame this year. He's a phenomenal football coach, great guy. If you ever want to talk wing tea, he knows it like nobody's business. But he sat me down a, a, a couple years ago at, at, a, at a clinic we were talking, and he said, Jeff, I have to be honest. There's no way you can do what you do without breaking all the WIVs. He said, there's no way. And I am, and Jeff's a great guy, and I said, Jeff, that's why it's so cool what we do, because our philosophy with our program, not just with our kids, but also with my coaching staff, is we tell our kids and my assistant coaches, we're not an a la carte rule team. And what I mean by that is I don't teach and I don't want our offensive line coach teaching our O-line to ever hold. I don't want our receivers or our DBs ever doing something that's against the rules. Because then a lot of coaches will say, yeah, yeah, and call that, that's not going to happen. We don't want that. Because I don't, we're going back to the first thing that we're about our culture, about how our kids do things. I don't want our kids on a Saturday night or a Friday night trying to decide which rules apply to them and which ones don't. If there's a rule, we abide by it. And that's what I'll go through too as we're talking about our, our practice planning is that we do it when we do it with uh, within the, the rules of the game. And I actually showed Jeff how we did it and he said, he said, I'm getting too old for this. And I feel bad because Jeff retired this last year, so I hope I, I uh, didn't uh, didn't have an influence on that because he's a great football coach. Um, but we install our offense in three days. And it's a lot. There are a lot of formations. A lot of plays, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stand here and lie. We change things and tweak things throughout the year because our kids get bored. So we, we're we're always so we're we're a different team by week nine than we are week one because we just got to keep the kids' interest. We got to make sure they're not getting bored, just going through the motions. But uh, a number of years ago, I read an article by by Dana Holderson, and at the time he was at Oklahoma State as the offensive coordinator, but. He's the head coach at West Virginia now. And he basically said in this article that um, any offense worth its weight should be able to be completely installed in three days. And when I read it, I was like, this makes, there's no way. Because we were a team back then when we did our eye stuff that we would be in weeks one and two and I would, as a play caller, say, well, I wish we had this in now. I wish, I wish we'd gotten to this. But we do it in three days. And the kids just hold on and, and and uh, do what they can. And then on the fourth day, we start over. Now when we do this, we have, we're a, we're a, a nine through 12 program. And I mentioned earlier that we have, we have uh, nine coaches, four of them, including myself, is paid. And what we did is we took our freshmen and we say, you're gonna practice with us all the time. We're gonna have other plays, uh, other people are gonna practice with us so that we can make sure we have the coaches to do what we wanna do because we also want the freshmen to be ingrained in our culture so that they see how things are and what they're supposed to be like. But I encourage you to look that up, just Google it up, uh, and you'll, you'll see, see the article. It's, it's really a great thing, but it really made me change what, uh, what and how we did things. Uh, I have a lot of freshmen and first year players that want to quit after the first day or two of practice. And they want to quit because they are so lost. But that's, uh, I was talking with uh, Coach Gale earlier about contact days. And, you know, I, I wish there was a great, easy way to use contact days. Our kids are like everybody else's. They, we have to show up. We try to get them there. We try to, you know, we, we don't require things because they're high school kids. And I believe they have to have time in their lives to be high school kids. But we, uh, we strongly encourage them to be there. And we say, if you don't come, you'll be behind. You have to understand that. Now, um, when the WI made their, their rules restricting practice time, uh, is anybody not from Wisconsin, anybody not know the Wisconsin rules? You, you got it, so. Um, 
we, we go with uh, three hours with, an hour, with a half hour break in the middle. So we go an hour and a half, take a break, hour and a half. We don't come back. We've, not since they've made those. I've never been a two-a-day guy. Uh, Mac, my first year coaching football, the team I coached with was a two-a-days. And I thought the whole time, what a waste of time. And we, we don't use the long days that the WI lets us. We do everything just on the, the one thing. But when they made those rules, we actually made our practice longer. And it, it, uh, the reason for that is because we had to make sure things were ready to go and that we weren't kind of doing more of a college thing where we got to make sure we're doing talking in, the, in, in a classroom, doing the work on the field. So during the, the first two weeks of the season, we, have, we start at 745. And those who don't know what an IMC is, because our kids don't know what an IMC is, that's a library. But back in the 90s, it was called Instructional, Instructional Media Center. So it's a library. We meet in the library. We go through um, some expectations of the day. We show them film clips of what we're going to be going through offensively and defensively. And then we transition to the field. Now right here, 810, you can see it says Air Team. This is where the WIA clock starts. We have, and I tell them that if they waste time getting from the library to the field, it doesn't matter because the clock's starting at 810. And we have some proximity issues where, I, I don't know why it takes high school kids a half hour to tie their shoes, but it seems to happen every time we're trying to go somewhere. And they got to get down and they got to get warmed up or they're going to watch their teammates play. And we stress at this first meeting that life and football are a lot about transitions. And don't waste time. Live life with purpose, have practice with purpose, and we're gonna make sure that we don't waste time. So we get down there, we do our normal warm-ups. We just do our dynamic warm-ups like everybody else, and then we immediately go to the best thing we do as a football program, and that is our team pursuit drill. I'll show you that a little bit later. Team pursuit is 10 minutes, the kids hate it, I love it, and it's, it's the best thing we do. Uh, we typically, on a given day, run 60 plays in a 10-minute period. And uh, I'll explain that drill later, but it does all kinds of stuff. It gets our communication systems down. It gets uh, a, a lot of conditioning in. It gets uh, practice lining up and formations correctly. And then it, it also gets them thinking about execution. Uh, I don't know how you guys, how much time you guys practice your mesh, whether it be for bubble, whether we do a lot of rocket toss stuff, um, the timing for all that stuff. We get lots of reps during team pursuit. And that's, like I said, I'll talk about later. Then we immediately go to that extra point. By the way, guys, if at any time I say something that you think doesn't sound right, I tell the kids this, my coaches know this, 90% of everything we do at our practice has a reason behind it. 90% of everything we do as a football program has a reason behind it. And if you ever want to know, just ask. Just don't ask in the middle of the drill. Just like, if go ask, ask me during the break, why do we do it like this? Why do we do it like this? There's a reason. And if you happen to hit one of those 10% of things that doesn't have a reason, I'll say, I don't know, just the way well done. Right? Or that's, I saw that clinic one time. That's the, that's the, and kids will say, can we change it? Sure. I'm not, I, the stuff that has a reason? No, you got to convince me we're going to change that. But we go to that extra point next. <coughs> now, why do we go to that extra point next? There are two big reasons why we go to extra point. Number one, we do a swing and gate extra point. It takes a lot of mental processing to learn all the stuff that we do. My assistant coach is in charge of it. I, I gave that to him three years ago, and he has gone way beyond my expectations with it. It's awesome. Every week he surprised me with something different that I didn't even know we did. And he's up, but he's got all these great ideas. The reason we do it right now is because, number one, we got to get some quality time, some quality mental time. The kids are exhausted from team pursuit, so they want to stand around. Well, if we're going to stand around, we're going to be teaching something. And we're an extra point doesn't take a lot of sprinting around like our offense does. The second reason why we do this is because we tell our kids every practice those first two weeks, we're going to score a lot. And we're going to have to be good at extra point because we're going to score a lot. And we keep telling them that so they get that in their heads. We're going to score a lot. So we're going to be good at extra point. So again, we go from fast, fast, fast to basically learn some time and then we're going to get back into it again. Now, on here, I, you can see that the defensive stuff isn't exact, but we're talking about offense, so I just want you to see how it kind of breaks down. The first day, everybody practices together, 9 through 12. Day two, we divide the team in half, 
from basically guys that are going to have a chance at having a meaningful rep on varsity to guys that need to go slower. We do it the first day because we want the freshmen to see the expectations. We want them to see the tempo. We want them to see it. When we do team pursuit, they get yelled at a lot by our upperclassmen, and we tell them, guys, remember, it's put up. We don't talk like that to our teammates. And we've had to change that drill a little bit so that the, the upperclassmen don't hate the freshmen for the mistakes they make for team pursuit. But um, it's, uh, and again, by the way, remember, this is the first day of practice. The first day of practice, we're trying to run six, the first thing after one of us, we're trying to run 60 plays. We haven't taught anything yet. What we're doing is we're, we're, it's review. It's also, um, I tell the coaches, if you can yell it out and get the instruction out there, you can do it. Otherwise, we're, we're moving. And the guys got to figure it out. It's also, we'll use our contact days to actually teach and review stuff with them as well. Uh, we then go through. Half the team does offense, half the team does defense, and then we take our break. Because again, we have to have a half hour break after one and a half hours if we want to have the other hour and a half to practice. Um, during that break time, we'll go back up inside in the library and go through things that we liked and didn't like in second half practice. Now, we don't have great film. We don't do, we, we try to film practice all the time. I've got two, two managers that work really hard for us. They both um, have very big special needs, special education needs. And they, they don't film for us. They don't, it, it's, we, we do what we can. Sometimes we'll get a spouse to come film for us or something. If there's an injured kid later on in the season, they'll help film. But we gotta, we gotta just keep moving. And sometimes we'll show stuff from previous days or we'll show game footage from the previous year or whatever on that. They get transitioned out of the field, we warm up, we go right to kickoff. Why now? It's either kickoff or kick return. Those will rotate, or it's one of the special teams. But the simple thing I have, the rule for our coaching staff, is it's got to be something where they're running. They got to be running, they got to be moving. It can be drill work, but everybody's got to be moving. I hate lines. And that's the thing my assistant coach will tell you the most common thing I yell at practice, I, I have a big encourager, is, is why are people standing around? Kids are playing football to play football, they're not playing football to watch football. And we got to keep them moving, got to keep going. And that's the constant thing I'm always yelling at them, other than, hey, nice job over there. All right, then we get to our, this is what our offensive schedule looks like. We take our offensive linemen and we send them off on their own. And they, we have basically six blocking concepts that we use. I say concepts, it's, it's basic rules and stuff. But our rules are different than our plays. And they learn those rules and they go through it, and they're gonna spend three days on their own. The whole line has been three days on their own learning those different things. Meanwhile, you can see we have the receivers, the, the QBs, and the running backs. We have fundamentals of blocking while, while the inside players are working on the mechanics of installing the first play. Now, whenever we do this, we're going to set stuff up so we can rapid fire. Because again, I don't want them to stand and listen. I want them to do. So we'll try and get people arranged so we can get it set up and do as many as we can at that kind of thing. Um, here we have a uh, pass concept we're working on. You can see that the quarterbacks go from one side of the field working with the backs on this. After 10 minutes, they flip over, they run across the field, and they work on this pass concept with the receivers. Meanwhile, the backs work on something else. Then we have them working on some outside stuff again, some fundamentals. We have them working on the inside, and we're introducing some more inside stuff, and they're constantly moving around. Uh, the first speaker today did a great job talking about how they, you know, QBs get conditioning uh, during individual time. Our QBs get their conditioning because they are always moving. Our receivers are on the same spot all the time. Our backs are in the same spot all the time. Our linemen are in the same spot all the time. Our QBs are running around the field to work with them. And it's, it's part of our servant leadership talk too, that they're supposed to be serving their teammates by doing that dirty work, because honestly, they're doing this or this when the receivers are out there running routes, stock blocking, crack blocking, running, 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 drinking all the water, and then they have the backs over there doing all these drills, and that's just why we do it that way. But you can see, these are all five minute segments. Uh, best thing I ever did, I bought a $1.99 app for my phone. It's called Seconds. It beeps, it beeps every five seconds. I went to Sam's Club, spent $110 on a big tailgate speaker. So I Bluetooth connect, 
and we have a countdown that has our segments timed off on it. I didn't have to spend the hundred eight thousand dollars just for a segment time. That's what we use. Now we, we were blessed with an unbelievable facility now. So now I can plug my phone into the PA system and we practice with that, but I won't, I won't talk about that too much. Um, so you can see we got people all doing stuff at different times. And then at 11.45, our WIU time is done. And that means that we are now done on the field. We, uh, we then have uh, every day one group is lifting, they go up to the left, and it's not cool down time, it's not all those ways that teams are trying to bend the rules with weight room time. They're, they're going in, they're, they're doing their workout, and they're going home. So our practices used to go from 8 to noon the first two weeks. Now they go from 7.45 to 12.15 because we have transitions. We can't practice much, but we're also getting some other stuff done now. So that's, that's, how we, that's how we do day one. And you can see, uh, and this was the thing about the Dana Holgerson article, is that I had, as a coach, I had to package things. I had to package things and say, what are similar concepts? What are similar things that can work together and be grouped? How can we put these together? So on day one, our offense is learning blast, cross, fly, dive, and trap. They're also in the passing game learning blackjack, money, Florida, and soda. And we're doing everything out of our deuce formation. Or you can see here, we have a spread right, spread left, hot left, hot right. We're gonna work those in with the older guys if they, if they show they can do the first, first step. Again, that's day one. That's everything we go through on day one. And a lot of it's right and left, a lot of this other thing. But you'll notice nowhere in there was their conditioning because everything is get moving. Don't be standing around, get moving. Get moving, get moving. By the way, um, head coaches, this took me a long time to figure out. Um, the best thing you can do, even if it means using your own money, because I had to do that, to help your practices go faster, is buy more footballs. Because even the linemen want a football, but no one ever has enough footballs. And usually somebody's hogging them, so get as many as you can. And they're not cheap, you know, they, but you get some synthetic ones and stuff too as you go. Um, here's our day two. I just want to show you that what we do on day one and day two is we actually flip um, flip the, the what's first. Now, out here, you see it flips. What we do here is this is actually young guys will do this. Young guys will do the offense. The old guys do defense first. And we tell our team, defense is most important, so that'll, that'll be first. And we will always spend more time on defense. Uh, one thing, too, about the, the clock thing, uh, my assistants will tell you there's no such thing as one more. There's no such thing as one more. In fact, one of the, the phrases I coined at practice that now our, our uh, assistant coaches will remind me of, too, when I'm having a bad day, is they'll say, one more rep gets kids hurt. One more rep gets, gets hurt. And those of you that have been coaching for a while, think about that. How many times you had a practice, are you gonna get just one more, one more, and then boom, you have an injury. And it's a bad injury now. Because the kid's tired, the kid's fatigued, and you're doing it because something that you weren't happy about, but ultimately um, losing that kid is, is gonna hurt you more than that one extra rep. Um, again, same basic schedule, you'll see our special teams change, otherwise it's the same, but uh, that's the, the practice schedule with that. Here's team pursuit. Uh, I'll get through this real quickly. And uh, this is our football field. We put cones seven yards from the sideline, both at the 10 yard line and at the goal line. If I think our players are lazy and out of shape, I make it 15, but it's 10 and 10 is hard enough. I also put one in the center of the field. And again, we have two cones over here, seven yards from the sideline. <coughs> We also have uh, about four footballs sitting back here. And what will happen is the coaches will stand here, or like the first day, honestly, we stand right over here, and we, we just yell the plays. We'll say 28 fly, or fly right, and go right up, and they'll run it. And we tell the young guys, depending on the number of kids we have, We'll say, guys, we're going to run every play three times. If you don't have a clue what you're doing, number one, don't be in the first group. And number two, do exactly what the guy in front of you did. And we, we, we will go through. So like I say 60 plays, it's not number ones aren't getting 60 plays. Our team is getting 60 <coughs> plays. But 
We run every outside run or quick pass we have in our playbook. Every one of them. We'll run them for every formation we have. Um, one coach feeds the football, make sure that it's always there, the center has it, because no one wastes it. And then we have two coaches that are either signaling the play or yelling out the play, depending on what it is, um, or going off the wristband. I tell my coaches, coach on the run, because everybody wants to say, hey, can I talk to that kid? You can yell to that kid. You can't, you can't tell them to stop what they're doing. You can yell to them, but you can, as long as you can yell. And sometimes our coaches will be like running alongside the guy. I tend to stand here and just yell stuff at everybody. Um, but it's, it's just rapid fire going, and then also they have to exit outside here. Kids will get lazy and they'll want to run back through here, the next group is running the play there, and you don't want to collide into each other. It happens. That's why you gotta make sure they exit around the outside. By the way, if we're running a play to the right, the entire offensive line has to get to that cone. The back has to get outside here. Everybody has to get that cone, except the quarterback who runs the opposite cone, and they come back and do it again. Um, our goal is 20 perfect plays. That's our goal. We usually will run between 50 and 60, but our goal is 20 perfect plays. Any fumble, any incomplete pass, or any penalty. So if we have a, if we're in an illegal formation, if somebody falls starts, if the ball's on the ground for any reason, if we have 10 guys because people are, are taking breaks, because by the way, we tell the guys, take a break if you need it. If you need water, go get water. The team will the team will suffer because you're taking that break. But you go ahead and do what you need to do because this is what we have to get to. And there are days, and you do this happen very often, but usually once per season, that we will get to about negative 12 for our count, or negative 16. Because like the first four plays, balls on the ground, not lined up right, false start. So suddenly we're at negative 16. I blow my whistle. I ask our team if we're really going to practice today, or if they want to waste our time, or if they want to get better. We'll then go say, hey guys, we're going to start again. Just remember that it, if we don't reach our goal, that we will take time out of practice to just run. We'll, 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 we'll lose offensive practice time to just run, if that's what you do. So we go back and start again. If they're still negative, then we just stop right there. We go do conditioning for the next, for the next, next 10 minutes. And then also during offensive time, we run. Because, because we're practicing communication, we're practicing formation, we're practicing uh, reading our communication system, we're practicing mesh, we have lots of stuff with that. And the kids, like I said, the kids like they hate it because it's so fast, so up-tempo, and they are sucking air when they're done. Uh, yeah, after the second day, we send the, the second group to the outside of the field, both so that they're not messing up the varsity group, because the upperclassmen get really upset when the freshmen don't know what they're doing. And I always tell them, why, why would they know what they're doing, right? They've never done this before. Uh, but then also, because we want to get more conditioning. One thing, too, I'll say about communication is I tell our players that everyone needs to be able to know the play. So if the play is blackjack, everyone needs to be able to read it from the wristband or get that signal from the sideline and know it's blackjack. Our quarterback will quite often say blackjack, blackjack, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. But they should not be waiting to hear what the play is from the, from the quarterback. I, we also say that everyone has to do their mission work. And for those who don't know, mission work is when you go out and you spread the good news. So if I'm the receiver close to the sideline and I hear blackjack, blackjack, I should immediately start running to my spot yelling blackjack, blackjack, blackjack as I'm getting lined up. <coughs> Or if we're changing the formation and we're saying hot right, hot right, uh, 26 counter, hot right, 26 counter. Or really, our, I say that because there's so many people we able to play in the room. That's not what we actually call it. We'll say, we'll say, we'll say hot right this. They're immediately going hot right, hot right, hot right, because they're getting lined up. And they're, they're communicating that stuff so that they, they, they get that information. And again, we can go a lot faster. When teams work together and communicate, it uh, happens really good. By the way, our kids know this, we talk about it. If we run 60 plays, we're probably pretty good for And that Now, I'm not saying our count will be 60, but if we run 60 total plays, we're, good, we're probably going to be OK. We might, we might lose one or two games, but we should be OK if we run 60 plays. 
our goal is 20. This is this is film. Hey guys, I apologize. I've tried for five years to film Team Pursuit. I've had other people try to film Team Pursuit, and I can't get film of Team Pursuit. It's like myth or legend or something. I don't know. It. I I had I had it all lined up this last year to film a bunch of segments of Team Pursuit from different angles, and I get in, I look at the film, and. One's a close-up of my assistant coach signaling all the plays. And I mean close-up, you see like this of him. And I don't know what, I don't know what the guy was thinking when he was filming that. I tried something else, and of course the, the camera tipped over, I tried something, so sorry. Um, but it's, it's, they line up, they go fast, get the thing over for it. Uh, in season, our Mondays are weird, our JV games are on Monday, uh, but we, we basically just do a lot of walkthroughs talking on Mondays and we usually play games. Play games like play tag, play uh, capture the flag, do other stuff just to get some good conditioning in. We also do some speed work and stuff on Monday, but that's that's Monday. But here's our Tuesday practice. Tuesday practice, again, everything's up tempo. You can see this is this is a uh, defensive emphasis. We're gonna go up here, we're gonna do um, a team warm-up, team pursuit. <coughs> Uh, we have our team talk. This is where we do our character ed stuff. Again, it's right for team pursuit, so there's stuff in there anyway. We get a break. Then we do our offensive breakdown. And we have everybody invited up doing stuff. We go to kick return. And then we finish with, with uh, the, the other stuff. Um, the, if you look at that, the, the rest of that time is defensive time, and I just didn't want to put it on there to save time. Wednesday is our offensive day. Um, this is this has changed over the last two years. I just didn't want to change the slide because it was weird to make the slide work. What we do now is we actually take 12 minutes, uh, 12 minutes actually before team pursuit to do our team talk. And our team talk is is an extended breakout session with their with different coaches. Like I said, we get all the all the coaches there on Wednesday, and every coach has a group except I do, and they have more in depth discussions about our theme for the week. Character and discussion, whether it be honesty, trustworthy, um, being respectful, things like that. And I just have some talking points for them that they talk about. And again, we talk about why it's important in life, why it's important in relationships, why it's important in football. Uh, that 12-minute segment, we're on the clock. We take we take practice time for that. It's important. We really believe in that. And I think it helps. I think it helps our kids be better people, most importantly. But it also helps us be a better football team because our kids learn to. To know each other and not just have the, the false masks and the bravado that goes along with sports a lot of times. But you can see we break it, break down, hit the stuff we need to. Um, the coaches will tell you that when I run a drill session, they do it a lot faster than when the assistant coaches do. And they just they just will say too, we don't know how you call the plays that fast. It's just they're really polite guys, they don't want to yell, yell all the time. Where inside run. Line up and run the ball. Line up and run the ball. And this is against. This is against. Um, this is. Yeah, it's against scouts. It's not thud. It's not live. It's it's a lot of dummy work too. This our receivers. Hey, they, they run a lot. In fact, week six or seven, um, I have to write my plans to ease off on the route running for our receivers, or their legs would be dead, because they do so much running between pre-practice, team pursuit, and then during that time, and. Our, our linemen, by the way, and you guys can tell this to your team too, I coached O-line for a lot of years. And as offensive linemen, we know that all the receivers and backs do is drink all the water. Because when you go to the water, it's all gone. Because the receivers and backs just drink it. So um, I know now why the receivers and backs drink all that water. So they're working hard. But but uh, we still tell our receivers and backs to not drink all the water, even though there's like this big winter on it. It's an inside joke on our team, I guess. Um, there's a typical practice script for the week. Um, these are our formations. Bunch left, deuce, diamond, hot left, hot right, over, um, hurt, do some power eye stuff still. Those are our formations. What happens is on a Sunday or Saturday after I've watched all the film, I go through and decide what things we're going to do. I, my first two years we did this, I asked my assistant, offensive assistants, hey guys, what else should we do? What do you see it? And they didn't say anything. And I'd say, I think we can really have success with this. And they'll be like, well, yeah, that's what we were thinking too. So we just save everybody time, and I just do this. And I, uh, this is our game plan for the week. 
And this is the wristband code for it. And um, that, like I said, I have my system of doing that. The great thing about our wristbands, we can change them every, every week. I mean, we change them every week because even though it would take a lot of time and resources to crack the code, we have teams that are legal to do that. But we, uh, so we, we change them every week. Um, we try to get off of them as quick as we can to hand signals, but it takes people time, time to learn that. And like I said before, if you look at some of this stuff, it's, it's just different in play calls. And everything has, everything has signals for it too. And here, I'll show you, I'll show you this right here. We have, uh, you see our bird concept? Can anybody guess what the signal for burger is? So conference teams and teams who see that don't go and steal this on us. I know you'll be called out. You know what a burger concept is? That's it. And it it they the burger 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 or for some reason this year they call it a movement. I, I I realize it's a sandwich and all, but that's what they want to do with it. Um, so yeah, we have simple signals going to take it. Uh, this is our wristband. This is what it looks like. Receivers, I should say, skilled guys have different wristbands than the whole linemen. The whole linemen have position specific wristbands. The, the skilled guys all have the same one. The linemen, the formation doesn't matter, so they don't have the formation on here at all. They just have plays. But it's like playing, it's like playing Battleship or using Excel or Google Sheets, whatever. Um, I'll call, I'll call eleven, and eleven. It's 34 dive rip. Right here is their blocking responsibility. And what can happen is we can change. This is a great thing for me is a lot of times when I was younger, I would think, how can I get my lineman to do this? Well, how do I have to take that to this? Now I can just, at our Monday meeting, say, hey, guys, we're going to block this one different. I'll show them the wristband, and I'll have a different thing there. So just be aware that this is going to be different when we call that, that play. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And they think they're really getting secret and stuff about it. It's, it's secret code. But I can also say 12 is the exact same play. 11 and 12 is the same play. And again, the formation doesn't matter because the line are going to go to the same spots unless we go heavy or, or weak. But that's, that's just how, how it works. But every, this, is the right, this is the right tackles wristband. The kids, every year, the, the new kids are always like, how do you know which one's which? Because it says where the wristband. This is the right tackle. The left tackle is LT. Right guard, whatever center, but um, these also these also are changes in our splits. If they see orange, they're supposed to widen a step. If they see yellow, they're supposed to reduce a step. If it's green, it's on quick kings. If it's black, it's on two or a long kings, and it it changes that all up like that. And it's, uh, it's done like that. Again, we can change this week to week. So like, if you look and say, oh, 13 or 14 is always on two. No, this week it's on two, but it's not. And then people have asked before too, you know, coach, what happens if you want to call a play that's out of your play for this week? Now, if there are a lot of plays for this week. Um, then I just call the play. Literally say, trips right, X stop. And then we learn trips right next stuff. It's it's not and, and again we're trying to go as fast as we can to increase that conflict. Um, again, this works for me. But here's the thing: this doesn't work for my JV offensive play caller, and it doesn't work for my freshman offensive play caller. They 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 don't know how I can call that stuff. And I have a I have a play sheet that has the codes on there. Because again, you have to get the information there as as quickly as you can. How can you get from here to the players? And it's uh, if you want this stuff, I'll send it to you. There's I have email and stuff on there. If you ever have any other questions too, uh, you know, if you have questions now, I'll be happy to answer them. Like I said, I was trying to go fast so we could get you to lunch. But uh, it's it, it really the kids like it. We like it. Um, I will say, if you're someone that goes up tempo, it's like a drug addiction. And what I mean by that is you're always chasing the high because you can never go fast enough. You gotta go faster, you gotta find a way to go faster. It's gotta be faster. And this year, and here's the thing too, if you're not very good, you're gonna get blown out badly if you're an up-tempo team. And this year, this year we lost level four to Amherst, and you know, they were a good football team. They actually had running clock on us, 
And that's the first time in a very long time we had a running clock. And I realized on reflection, and, and actually during that game it too, that if we would have slowed it down, it, it, they wouldn't have had a running clock on us. They were not taking anything away from them. They were good. They weren't, they weren't 35 points better than us. They were, they were maybe two touchdowns better than us. I think five times out of 10, um, we probably the game the other way, but it just didn't that night for us. But again, when you're when momentum's falling away from you and you're you're trying to go fast and suddenly you're punting from your own end zone after burning 30 seconds off the clock, bad things happen. So that's something as coaches we talk about and we're trying to uh, find a better way to do that. Uh, any questions, guys? Just What's your team time look like where you have to fund? The like when we're going. Uh, against the defense and they tackle or yep. touch? Uh, we do a lot against bags. We, we do a lot we do a lot against bags, we do a lot against air. Um, in fact, if you ask the rest of the offensive staff, well, guys, I, I, I brush over this. Our, when you swing and get extra points, we have we rugby punt, we have a really good kick return. I wish we could come up with something more exotic on kick, kick off, just because we want to make teams prepare for a lot of things. And you know we're all we all tend to copy each other, so I don't like when other teams in our conference try and do things like we do it because then that gives other teams in the conference more time to practice that, so then we feel like we'll change it. No. Anyway, um, to answer your question, defensively it looks very different than offensively. Offensively, we do a lot against airs. Okay. We do a lot against bags. We'll do a lot where it's not contact. We'll say we'll say run run the touch, where I'll tell the defense. I'll tell the, the coaches around the scout defense to give us a different look every play. So give us a 3-3 stack, give us a 4-2, five, give us a give us a 3-4, give us up every play. And we don't and I don't script it. I want them to try and figure out the best way to stop us. <coughs> and I'll say I'll say one time chase motion, one time roll motion, one time don't even move, one time you'll do this. So and they get to just be as creative as they want, they get all excited when they stop us. So we will have team offensive sessions where we look terrible because they've guessed and gotten into really bad looks for us. But it helps us get better because we, we talk about it and how to come out of that. Right. We're defense, we script everything. We know exactly what's going to be run by scout team during defense and how it's going to work. Any other questions? Do you do a or Jamie John? Say for every week, change it every week? No, it's always the same. Always the same. Yep. Once once we establish what it is, it's, it's going to go. And the thing is, um, you know, if you want to go through our film and try and guess which four we're running like that, by all means, go do it. Because then you got to got to teach your players that, and you got to figure that stuff out. But it's it. We we try to go as fast as we can. In fact, this last year, we we didn't run Jimmy Johns as much as we have in previous years because we just got to be very fast as that. We're, we couldn't go faster than what we were doing. It, I shouldn't say it, other than what the officials would go at, because the officials would slow us down so much. <laughs> and I, and I, guys, I, I'm currently high school principal at our school, and I'm also I was AD the last the last four years, and I know this that officials don't want to work our games. They don't want to work our games because they have to run a lot, and they're going to get chewed out by us for going so slow. In fact, I was told by one crew that I forced one of their guys, the best official ever in the state, to retire. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you guys can thank me later. But I'm sure I'm not, I'm not <laughs> you know, they're doing their job. It's not like a, it's not like a, a constant battle with that. But again, if you have questions, call me. Stop by. I love talking football.